The Woman King is not only a shit title, but a shit film as well. A film so unself aware of its own sexism, it would rather use an oxymoron with the title The Woman King instead of Queen, because it views the female title as lesser than the male one. It's ironic. Now, this film has a few problems. The first is that this is based on a bullshit fictional history that never happened, which they thought that they could get away with until they were caught and forced to change the description of the movie. You liar! They did this because the writers desperately wanted a feminist African story, but must have been shocked to find that Africa isn't a very progressive place. And I was like, no way! So they decided to completely alter the history of an entire country, the Kingdom of Dahomey, by keeping the parts they liked, whilst discarding those more problematic elements they didn't in order to make this happen. Like glorifying female fighters as feminist icons, women who were subjected to female genital mutilation and were not allowed to be in relationships, because they were the property of the king, and this is somehow considered girl power to these people. And the way female fighters can not only take on men twice their size, but also several of them at the same time, is both ridiculous and embarrassing to watch. This movie is filled with women full of penis envy and trying so hard to emulate men, they end up coming off as irritating. And all of the men are either completely useless or just outright evil. This is what happens when you get retarded political activists to make a historical epic, Everything they make turns into shit. The second problem is that the movie itself is fucking boring and none of these characters are likeable, so you can't even give a shit about what happens to any of them. This film is about 50 minutes longer than it needed to be, as it contains too many unnecessary subplots and tons of modern day messaging, which bloats the movie and kills the pacing, making an already long movie feel even longer. So much so that I wanted to throw my computer out the fucking window when I realised I was only halfway through this pile of cat shit. Now I'd like to make a comparison to a much better historical epic, Braveheart. Braveheart is unrealistic, with lots of events being embellished from real life, though nowhere near as much as this movie does. And Braveheart is much longer than this, clocking in at about three hours. And yet no one ever has said that Braveheart is too long. Well that's because the movie is fun as fuck, with great characters, good dialogue, brilliant action set pieces and decent pacing. And most importantly, it was made for fans, and not the child groomers in Hollywood. Whereas this film is not made for the audience, it's made for sad middle-aged feminists and people who hate the West for no reason. Now with all of that said, it's time to break down this fucking awful movie. The film starts with a bullshit origin story about how Dahomey was a feminist country that fought to stop the slave trade. It's a total fabrication. Viola Davis and her lesbian fighters are about to ambush a bunch of men, but she doesn't seem to understand the element of surprise and just stands there until the men spot them. Stop acting so a fight breaks out and we see all of the women easily beat all of the men. One of the fighters even stabs through a man with her fingers. Ah. After the battle, they rescue the prisoners and take them back to Dahomey. As the lesbians return to the village, no one is allowed to look at them because the king has decreed it. Why? We never find out. Also notice that all of the women have armbands on to exaggerate the size of their biceps and make them look bigger than they actually are. The same thing happens with female Thor in Love and Thunder. As they approach the fort, we see that the king's advisor is an obviously gay man. Wow, 18th century Africa sure is tolerant of gay people. Why are you gay? We cut to Naoi, whose family is arranging a marriage to an older man who expects her to be an obedient wife. You haven't bought her yet, don't damage the merchandise. So now he isn't happy with being slapped and does this. Why him or her father doesn't beat her senseless is a mystery to me. Instead, he takes her to the king's palace to join up with the lesbians. I thought her family was so poor they needed the dowry her wedding would have given them. Well, I guess not because they just give her away like she's fucking worthless. She gets accepted for training and is taken in where we see the warrior women dancing and giggling to each other. Hang on, this is supposed to be an elite soldier class similar to the Spartans. But unlike them who take being a soldier very seriously, all we see are a bunch of women gossiping. So the Oyo men go to the campsite and see that their men have been killed. Your comrades murdered by women. With all these women around, they were probably nagged to death. <laughs> We cut back to the palace and the king has a meeting where the women lecture everyone on slavery. She also doesn't seem to understand why people sell slaves in the first place. But why do we sell our captives? 
For weapons? It's called an arms sale, sweetheart. If you didn't have the weapons, the oil would have wiped you out already. She instead suggests that they sell palm oil to the Europeans, which we will come back to later. The meeting ends with them deciding to pay tribute to the oil to avoid war. The next scene is Naoi getting ready to join the lesbians. You will be paid for your work. Well, I guess Dahomey, an 18th century African kingdom, has equal gender pay. Your opinions will be heard. Now, if anyone was wondering why Dahame didn't make it into the 21st century, there's your answer. We take no husband, we will bear no children. You see, it's just like modern day feminists who work high paying jobs and have no family or kids, but minus the alcoholism. Isn't it inspirational? No! So now he joins them and says this to Viola Davis. I want to be a soldier. Liar! No, she didn't. She never showed any inclination at all. She didn't even join voluntarily. Her father forced her into this. We then see the first day of training, and the very first thing they learn is how to make a knot. Naoi quite rightly points out that this is fucking stupid, so Viola gives Naoi her sword, which is so heavy that she almost falls over trying to pick it up, and tells her to chop the head off the dummy. <laughs> so Viola chops the head off the dummy and says, I'd work on that rope. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. What is the lesson being learned here? It's not Karate Kid, where Danny is developing muscle memory, and it's definitely not Mulan, where she learns that she needs to tie both honor and discipline together to reach her goal. Nothing has been learned here. It's the same as this. Look what I can do. Well, what does that have to do with me? No, no. He's got a point. And this dumb fucking movie thinks that this is clever. They then go through a training montage and we even see a competition of men versus women. Well done, the pair of you are gonna die of infection, you fucking morons. So of course the woman beats a man twice her size like there was any other outcome. Fuck off! The next day the Oyo show up for their tribute and we see the leader of the group. It turns out that he engaged in some unwanted rough play with Viola Davis. So the rapist is unhappy with his tribute and also wants some of the female Female fighters as well, to which the king agrees. We cut to a poor town where we see Santo, a biracial man who has decided to accompany his friend to Africa. Once he arrives, he is sad to see that some of the Africans are slaves. For some fucking reason, this man is shocked at slavery, despite the fact that his mother was a slave and his friend came here specifically to buy slaves. What did you expect? The pair of them then witness Viola Davis bring the 20 women to the Oyo leader, but it turns out that Viola has no intention to hand them over and instead shows them their dead soldiers' heads. So what exactly is their plan? Well, all they do is just scream and run away. Sounds like a tea kettle. If your whole plan was to kill the rapist, then why not have all of the women stab him to death? Why did they even bother to come in the first place? All they were going to do is just run away. But the people are retarded. So all of the oil men are about to attack, but luckily for them, the entire tribe is coming from one direction, behind an iron gate, to which Naoi closes on them. Well, isn't that convenient? Viola fails to kill her rapist, even though Naoi could have helped at any moment, but instead just stands there. Your mother's useful as a cock-flavored lollipop. So the both of them jump off the pier and are picked up by the other women on boats. This is supposed to be a colonial town, run by Europeans, and yet they just let these African tribes fight each other in the middle of the street, and they also have no guards available in this town as well. I know what's going on here. You've all become idiots! They return to Dahomey and Viola shows the king this enormous palm tree forest that they can use to make palm oil. So you're telling me that the king knew that the Europeans wanted palm oil and you had this enormous palm tree forest and couldn't figure out that these palm trees could make palm oil that the Europeans want? You fucking idiot! We then get Viola Davis lecturing the king on slavery yet again because he wants to expand his empire. Let us not be an empire who sells its people. Even if they are not Dahomey, they are still our people. Bullshit. Africa is not one people, just as Europe, Asia, and South America are not one people, you fucking retard. You are even trying to wipe out the Oyo tribe, which completely goes against your own arguments. The white man has brought immorality here. 
this is exactly what zero accountability looks like. Any atrocity people in Africa, and by extension Dahomey commits, is someone else's fault. Just how delusional can this moron be? The next day, Naoi goes to a waterfall and just bumps into Santo in the middle of nowhere. Yep, I'm not fucking joking. These two characters just bump into each other and they instantly want to fuck one another. Christ, who wrote this? So what we have here is a shit Pocahontas storyline, except they made John Smith biracial. We skip ahead and now he goes through a trial where we see her beat men twice her size and she wins. Fuck off. As this is going on, the king is negotiating with a slave trader about not wanting to sell Africans, but instead palm oil. The slaver says this. The people in my lands prosper because of the slave trade. Bullshit. This film pushes the complete lie that everyone in the West is only rich because of slavery. Also, the logic is broken here, as if the West can only make money off the slave trade, then how are they going to pay for the palm oil you're trying to sell them? Also, how did they afford to make the ships to get the slaves in the first place? This is the problem with dog ship politics being forced into the story. It fundamentally doesn't work. And this very same trade has made you rich. Rich as the king of England. Liar! This dickhead is comparing a tiny African nation where everyone is walking around barefoot to the British Empire at the height of its power. This film tries so hard to push an agenda, their lives get even more outlandish. The slaver then says that if he stops selling Africans to the Europeans, they will no longer be protecting him and instead buy off his enemies. And all the king says is that he will stop protecting the Europeans. What the hell does that even mean? Tell that to the French, who wipe you out in the same century. We then see a bunch of singing and more Pocahontas subplot, which is boring as fuck. Nobody cares! We see the Oyo are on their way to attack Dahomey, so what is their plan to stop them? Well, they make gunpowder bombs and disguise them as termite nests and lay them about a field because they know somehow that the Oyo will camp here specifically and not anywhere else. Well, isn't that convenient? She sets off the bombs and they attack. We see some fucking awful fight choreography where we see the same shit we saw in Prey. This weapon was fucking stupid in Prey and it's fucking stupid now. The lesbians then go on to win, but Nawi and Lashana Lynch get captured and put up for a slave auction. I don't give a fuck. Nawi's boyfriend wants her to be let go, but they tell him to fuck off. The girls use this distraction to run away, but the Europeans actually have guards this time and kill Lashana Lynch. Oh no! Anyway, last week... Luckily for Nawi, her boyfriend comes in and they for no reason let him take her away. Now why didn't the boyfriend just purchase the both of them and release them afterwards? And why are the guards doing what he says now when they told him to fuck off before? Good question! He takes Naoi back to his apartment and fucks her. As this is going on, Viola wants to rescue them, but the king says no, but she goes anyway. Once she is in town, she teleports behind the guards watching over the slave pen and kills them very easily. Wow, for a slave port, they sure leave their main commodity very lightly defended. And as the slaves are freed, luckily for them, they have an entire rack of weapons available right next to the slave pen. That's fucking stupid! So the slaves attack and somehow people with Without guns easily beat people with guns. Viola Davis then goes on to kill her rapists, and we see the slaver and now his boyfriend jump on a boat with whatever slaves they can carry. But Santo betrays his best friend by freeing the slaves and allowing them to drown him. His best friend that he's known for years and who took him to Africa in the first place. Why does he do this? Well, it's because he's a simp, that's why. And what exactly does he get for betraying his best friend and not being able to return home because his family would definitely try to kill him? Absolutely nothing, as Naoi and the rest of the slaves just leave him and the town behind. Please get what you fucking deserve! Probably because he's half white and they would never accept them, as they are racists. We then see the king give a bullshit speech about how the Africans stopped the slave trade. He tries to take credit when actually it was the British that put an end to the slave trade. The last scene is everyone dancing and Dahomey living happily ever after until the king was assassinated and the country destroyed by the French. 
To summarise this movie, none of the characters are likeable or sympathetic, instead they come across hypocritical, the story is too fucking long and uninteresting, the action set pieces are ridiculous and poorly executed, and this portrayal of Africa is not only full of shit but also retarded as fuck. If I was African, I would be insulted by this monstrosity. So yeah, that was The Woman King. I'm not surprised it flopped, it's cat shit.